Hey there, Coach Patrick here in Thursday Nation, back with another Coach Podcast slash Coach video for those of you paying attention on YouTube. This week, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the weekly review hack. Um, this is something that we started last year with our training plans at the request of one of our members. And one of the best parts about um, being uh, a member of Endurance Nation is not only do you get to contribute to the plans, but you as a consumer of plans get to use plans that have been uh, updated by not only myself, but by your peers as well. And there's always iterations, always improvements going in there. We are pretty relentless, I guess, is the best word for it um, in terms of managing your training and making sure that you're getting the most out of every single training opportunity. Um, and this weekly hack, this weekly change is a huge part of that. Uh, this was instituted last year, like I mentioned. And the whole goal here was to give some perspective to your year. Um, and by not just waiting until the end of the year, which is something we've traditionally done with our annual review process, but actually checking in incrementally across each week. A week is an excellent unit of time to measure. It's more than just a session. <laughs> Many people evaluate their week by session. You know, two, this week is great Tuesday morning because my workout was great, but this week is terrible Tuesday night because I feel awful and Wednesday morning, it's great again. Um, it's you know really stochastic like that. Um, and to me, it ultimately really not that effective, but rather looking at weeks as a unit of measure is something that's very um, easy to do. Most of the software out there allows you to create a view of weekly summaries. We're using free stuff um, like Strava. If you're using our um, preferred training plan log provider at Final Surge, um, you get a sense of what a week is. You get a snapshot, and that allows you to start um, stacking week upon week of good work. Or if you've had a couple of good weeks and then a bad week, we can compare the two and then decide how we want to change. So in general, that week becomes an excellent unit of measure to determine how you're doing and to make uh, changes. And also just to get a sense of your progress. You know, when I think about having a great race at the end of your season, it's not about any particular workout. It's not about waiting until a particular time of year. It's about putting together consecutive weeks of quality training as uninterrupted as possible um, to make you successful. You know, um, like I tell my athletes all the time, the longer you play the game, the better you get at the game. Similar to that, the more consistent you are, the more successful you will be. Um, it's very hard to take three days off every week because of crazy life and then train hard for four days and expect to have the same training effect as someone who's at the game for seven straight days. Not seven straight days of workouts, but following their progression for seven days, which includes rest days and, and other uh, considerations. So when we think about um, success, we think about putting these weeks together. And a huge part about putting a week together um, because it doesn't just happen outside of the box, is getting good at it, is getting um, into the rhythm, into the progress. And so this gets challenging across the course of a season because you're using different training plans. You've got different focus points. So inside Endurance Nation, we start off in the winter with like run durability and we're sort of building run frequency. So success is defined as running frequently, right? Putting up a decent weekly run mileage. We transition to the out season where we start doing more uh, focused, intense work, um, more around threshold. And in that case, success is a function of moving those threshold numbers around. It's not so much about, about volume or frequency as it is saying, I'm going to do work and I'm going to rest from that work and I'm going to see my numbers go up. We transition out of the out season into our general prep, which involves more volume. So success in that case involves us going back to tracking mileage, particularly the longer sessions that you have. So again, success in that context is about those longer uh, volume sessions. And then finally, our race prep. We start to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. We're doing nutrition. We're doing race rehearsals. We've got some volume. We've got some speed. It all depends on your race, even by discipline, what you're doing. Um, all of that kind of driving into your race. And success in that case uh, takes a little bit of a step back from just the human performance side and more about putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. Success is defined as pacing. It's defined as excellent nutrition. It's defined as the ability to recover um, and ultimately learning as well through that process. So as you go across the course of the year, you're sort of changing relatively quickly. Every four to six, sometimes even eight weeks, you're changing a focus point. And while it's easy to get into a groove and follow a routine, athletes who do a good job of seamlessly moving from phase to phase will ultimately do better. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is to have a scheduled check-in. If you wait until something has gone wrong to, to do a check-in, um, you're in trouble, right? Because we don't usually we don't usually act when things have gone wrong once, right? We act when things have gone wrong like five times. So for example, let's say you're running and your shoe doesn't feel right. You think about it on that first run, like that's not okay, I gotta fix that. And then you finish running, totally forget about it. Three days later, you go back out again, do another run, your foot starts hurting again. You're like, man, I really gotta check that thing out. Um, I'm gonna make a note, right? You tell yourself, and then you go home, you forget about it. Three days later, you're running again, 
this time you say, man, my foot's really hurting longer than usual. Um, I really, I think I was supposed to write a note last time, but I didn't. I got to call somebody. When I get home, I'm going to call somebody. When you get home, you don't call anybody, but you make a note, right? And then three days later, when you run again, you're like, okay, this is ridiculous. This has been killing me forever. I've got to do something about this. And then maybe, maybe you'll call someone or maybe you'll mention it to a friend. The point being, it takes so long and so many things to go wrong before you actually stop and pick up the phone or stop and take action um, that you're really doing a detriment to yourself. So if you have that schedule block at the end of every week, I prefer Sunday afternoons, more on that in a minute. You've got that schedule block where you sit down and you say, all right, let me take stock on all my training. What's working? What's not working? What changed? What didn't change? What have I done? What have I missed? What do I need to change for this next week? So you can ultimately take something that's gone a little bit off track in one week and get it back on course in the next week, we're all set. If you wait three or four weeks to finally get your head wrapped around something, it's quite possible that riding that ship again to get back on course will take another four weeks. Four weeks off course, four weeks to get back on course, eight weeks ultimately lost um, because of inactivity. And so this scheduled review becomes really, really important. It's something that you can do not only for your training, obviously, but for work as well. So <clears throat> let me dive into sort of what these cons are around this weekly review. Um, um, and most important, uh, the thing, biggest thing I want to sort of touch on here, which I wrote down on my, my notes, thank goodness I wrote it down. It must have taken me six runs to do that, right? Um, is sort of undermining that fallacy of what is often referred to as like a black swan event, right? A black swan being something that we couldn't have predicted, uh, but ultimately had a big impact at the end of the day, um, more, a term more popularized um, by you know, economic uh, theorists and so on. Um, the idea being as well, in this case, that there's one workout, there's one thing that just makes your race happen. Um, there's one session and ultimately there never really is one workout. You may remember a particular workout and believe that that workout has a correlation on your race and performance, but more often than not, those of you who are live in the endurance space have success on race day, not because of any individual workout, but because of all the workouts that have built up to that specific session, which again is part of that progress to getting you towards your performance goal on race day. The more consistent you can be over time, the more successful you will be on race day um, because an endurance race is in and of itself, by definition, really just another workout. It's not anything special. We're not Olympic caliber swimmers who are training and then we have a taper week and we shave down and we go in there and we're all of a sudden 10 seconds faster. 10 seconds faster across, I don't know, a 90 second um, swim effort is insane. That's an insane improvement. That would be like an Ironman athlete taking 45 minutes off of their time. We don't do that. Um, but rather, we do find incremental improvements. And a great deal of that is built on two elements. One is consistency. And the other part is learning. And the learning part comes from that consistency piece, which is tweaking that nutrition. So every week I go out and run. I had a decent run last week, but something seemed off with my nutrition. So this week, I'm going to up my fluids a bit. I up my fluids. I felt a little bit better, but then I had to stop the piece. So I'm going to back it down a little bit and go back out again. And week after week, session after session, I'm making lots of little changes. All of that ultimately adds up to a place where I can go out and run, uh, whether it's training or racing. I've got my fluid plan I need to execute, and I can be successful because I have that experience under my belt. Not that I just miraculously made changes on race day or that the Gatorade was the perfect temperature and I didn't have problems, but rather um, the culmination of lots of work and a good amount of focus has yielded a system that's effective for this year and allows me to be successful um, not only in training, but also on the big day from racing. So I really want to get away from that sense of there's one key session or one key workout. Sure, we have key workouts in our training programs around uh, race rehearsals and so on. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to all the work that prepares you for that, which ultimately then prepares you to race, right? So it's this sort of grand general progression that we have across the course of the year. And a lot of people lose sight of that as they go through their training, okay? So how do we handle um, a weekly review? So the weekly review starts the week before. So you don't just start on Sunday looking backwards. I want you to start on Sunday looking forward. So we start your first time you do a weekly review. We start on Sunday, we look forward and we say, okay, this is my week. I am, I don't know, 10 weeks out, 12 weeks out, 18 weeks out from my race. These are my goals for the week. What are your goals? Come up with three. You've got probably, you know, anywhere from seven to maybe up to as many as 14 workouts in a given week. What are your top three sessions? What do you want to achieve this week? Do you have a particular key workout? Um, is there a mileage goal that you have? Is there um, something extraneous you're trying to improve, like your body composition? Are you working on your sleep and recovery? Um, are you trying to make changes outside of your training life that may be impactful around nutrition, um, around uh, around work? Perhaps uh, you know you spend a great deal of work 
uh, time standing, you're trying to change it, or a great deal of work time sitting or driving, you're trying to change that. What are your goals this week? What do you want to do? So set those goals first, write them down, um, and then we can begin to approach that set of goals within the context of your training week. But if we don't capture those goals, then we can't measure success at the end of the week. All we can do is just say, I did all of these things. And if we don't have goals to measure those things against, we won't really know whether or not we're making improvement. So step one, write down those goals for your training week, okay? Step two, then it obviously is to go through your week. And there's lots of different ways to go through your week. For me, I like to take those goals and I like to have them visible. So if you're in charge of your own workspace or something you can print out, you know, put uh, near where you work, um, or perhaps that goes in your, you know, your pain cave where you train. Like I do a lot of training downstairs, downstairs inside, uh, indoors. So I've got like my little space where I can write things down on a whiteboard. So I might put my three goals there. Um, whatever it is, get your three goals up so you know what they are. And then you're going to go through the process of executing your week. Um, don't worry so much about changing anything about your week specifically, but just do your week with those three goals in mind, right? And help you prioritize the training you're doing, hopefully give you a little bit more focus on top of the focus of your current training plan, right? Then at the end of the week, we wanna review our week. So the next Sunday comes, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna pull up your training log or whether it's written or digital, and you're gonna say, okay, self, like how did I do? What was successful, what was not successful? We can look at the numbers and we can look at your goals and whether or not you achieved your goals. And we can start to break things down, right? If you did hit your goals, what was successful? If you didn't hit your goals, what was unsuccessful? And then you can step back one step further and say, what other sort of trends am I noticing here? For example, you may be successful in hitting all of your goals, but you may be exhausted by the time you come to Saturday and Sunday and discover that you've been really kind of burning the midnight oil during the week and your ability to recover on the weekend is really compromised by this need for extra sleep. Um, you know, if you're someone who finds yourself napping quite a lot on Saturday and Sunday after your morning hard training sessions, odds are you're not getting enough rest during the week. I'm sure that training load on the weekends is tough, um, but uh, that ultimate fatigue is a is a result of not getting quality sleep during the week. So you may want to make a change moving forward. But the point being, this seven-day review cycle allows you to take a look at a discrete amount of time, identify things that worked, continue them, identify things that didn't work, make changes. Those instantly will go into your next week's set of goals. Um, and then ultimately sort of get that sense of how that week was. You can almost kind of rate your weeks. Um, you know, something as simple as color coding, like green, orange, and red, or green, yellow, red. So you know, like what was good, what's, you know, kind of good and what's not good, right? So you kind of get a sense of how many green weeks can I string together, right? Or how many, how many no red weeks can I put together in a calendar, which will ultimately become successful, right? Another element that we want to think about when we go through that weekly review um, <clears throat> is, um, is scheduling it. So I think, um, one of the best ways to do this, I use my phone and a calendar, I set a calendar event for myself, and I make sure that it goes off sort of after uh, my kids go to bed on Sunday night. So I've got about an hour after the kids go to bed before I go to bed, um, generally uninterrupted time where I can sort of collect my thoughts and plan ahead. I like to do it on the weekend um, because Monday through Friday, obviously really focused on work. Don't have a lot of personal time in that window to dive into things that, um, that interest me or may impact me personally. During the week, I'm more focused externally on um, my customers and obviously my family and so on. Um, and so that Sunday night review cycle really helps me. I like to, to look at my weekly charts. I've got several weekly charts in there related to, to mileage, to training time, uh, to training stress score, all things that allow me to sort of um, sum up my week in different verticals, right? I can say, what was my training hours? What was my mileage? Um, you know, what was my stress score? How do I compare this week to the other weeks? you know, from success metrics like that, um, all of that really adds up. But ultimately, um, those those weeks will add up and most of you will be successful. The key element of this review process is just having the wherewithal to reflect on what worked and what didn't work. Inside the team, um, people who are on the team EN level, more engaged with me as a coach, will often use their coach forum thread where we interact to give me a weekly update. It's a great exercise to get into simply just to sum up what you did. It gets you out of that mindset of those individual workouts and kind of getting lost in the minutia. Um, but it also puts you in a position where you can make critical changes as you need to. If there's something we can identify early on that's not working and we can make that change super early, week two, week three of your training cycle for the year, that's easy. That's done. Once you've been doing something for 10 weeks or 12 weeks, it's really hard to make that change. It's become a habit already. It's something that we were going to have to get out, detrain you, get out of your system, and then retrain you so you can make better decisions about it. And the sooner we can do that in the course of your training cycle, the better off you will be. Um, and the easiest way to do that, again, is just to start this weekly review process. It's built into most of our Endurance Nation training plans as a Sunday 
uh, afternoon workout right there on the schedule with some question prompts for you that you can do it yourself right at home. Uh, you can take a couple notes down, what worked, what didn't work, capture the key metrics out of the course of that week and set goals for the week coming up with everything that you want to do. You may have 14 training sessions. The odds of you hitting them all may be slim, but if you have a, a set of goals, top three things you want to achieve, you'll absolutely get those core workouts done. You'll continue to improve despite your schedule and all the hiccups, and you'll begin the process of stacking those quality weeks upon weeks, which will ultimately lead to the successful race that you're looking for. All right. I hope this has been helpful. I thought it was a great tip for you. If you've got feedback for me and comments on this weekly review concept, please head over to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash endurance nation. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me what you're thinking. How do you handle that review process? What's worked for you? What hasn't? Um, what's the best thing that you've learned from your weekly review? I'd love to hear it. This has been Coach Patrick from Endurance Station signing off. Remember, you can always learn more about us online at endurancestation.us. I'll see you guys online or at the races.